There is sunshine in my soul today, the song we just sang, and it's certainly a good metaphor of what our lives could be or maybe even should be, but we know that sometimes there are cloudy days. There are some parts of the day where it actually gets dark and it's night. There are some days that we would just prefer to keep the blinds closed, stay inside, maybe even stay in bed. So not every day necessarily feels sunny, like everything, I mean, I love, I love the song. I think I suggested it to Alex to say, here's a good song. But life's not always like that. And so maybe another metaphor has to do with maybe reasons why sometimes we struggle. Now, sometimes life throws us a lot of challenges and difficulties, but what happens during those times? And where do we go? And is there any way that we may be able to get the load lifted a little bit? So... You know, we just kind of made it through Thanksgiving, getting towards Christmas, and maybe that's the time of year when people travel. Now, when you're going on an airplane, generally you think about not how much can I bring, but, you know, how can I just take what I need? And sometimes that could be a challenge. You may say, well, you know, I'm going south. But it could get snow in the south, so maybe I better take my boots and my coat, my hat, I better take the umbrella. Oh, I could take some rain boots, and then I could also take my raincoat. When I'm down there, I don't know, maybe we might go to a nice place, so maybe I should take my suit. And yet, on the other hand, maybe I could just take the swim trunks, but swim trunks wouldn't look that good in a really high-class restaurant. So, you know, I mean, there's all these things. What am I going to bring? And sometimes we have to say, I can't bring it all. Bringing it all is just too much, so we have to say, what are the necessities? What are the things that I can get by with? So Judy has a friend who travels quite often, several times a year, spends probably most of her money that she makes traveling around the world, and she's learned to kind of live out of a suitcase, the carry-on. So she can go for a week or two and still carry on only. That's it, just a small bag. She figures out what she needs, how to pack it, and that's enough. Because you don't really want to be burdened down when you're traveling, especially if you're going to do a lot of walking and a lot of hiking and a lot of moving around from hotel to hotel. And you don't want to be burdened down. So sometimes people get burdened down with too much, right? They get to the airport. It's like, what am I going to do? I had to bring it, you know what I mean? Because I don't want to get there and find out I left something at home that I really could have used. So it's almost like, you know, kind of, it's an older thing. The older you get, like the more stuff you have. It's just you got it and you keep it. It's like I know it's old and I know I don't use it, but it's got a piece of my heart. It's got my memory. It's got something in it that, you know, that was something that, you know, Aunt Susie gave me 50 years ago and she's been dead 49 years, you know what I mean? But that's just the last thing I have. And so we just accumulate stuff. And so sometimes the stuff burdens us, it weighs us, it's too much. So, you know, I, you, you get older, it's just like your house is just full, full of stuff, and you know, you know what the older person thinking, you know, we think of? It's just like, I'll just leave, I'll let the kids deal with it when I die, you know? It's like, come on, you know, we do, we really need so much. Do we get burdened down? Well, this was the problem with Solomon, right, the great king. He had so much wealth, he didn't know what to do with it all. He asked the Lord for wisdom, and the Lord gave him wealth as well. And so he had wealth, he had relationships, he had power, he had abundance. And so the whole book of Ecclesiastes is him trying to find peace and happiness and and more. We just need more stuff. More stuff, more things, more people, more music, more art, more gardens, more food. Everything's more. If we had more, we'd be happier more. But never really got there. And so he kind of sums it out, I think, in, in the first chapter by saying, all things are full of weariness. All things are a burden. All things just kind of weigh you down. A man cannot utter it. The eye cannot be satisfied with seeing nor the ear filled with hearing. So you're just getting more stuff is not the solution. So where is the solution? He finds out that the answer to life's problems, difficulties, and challenges It's not always the fixing of everything, but certainly the helping through it is in a relationship with God. It's not running away from it. It's not trying to put it off on somebody else. 
It's not trying to say, well, if I just spend more money and if I just go to one more party and if I just have a little bit more alcohol. I mean, he tried it all to say, this is the way I'm going to deal with life. And he found out it was in God. That's where he put his hope. And so this is what Ecclesiastes say. But, you know, somebody else that we can really relate to sometimes is King David. Now, he did have a lot. He started out with nothing, really, a very simple life. And yet he got to the point where he did have a lot of power and authority, but he had a lot of problems, too, and he had a lot of struggles in life. And so I think sometimes we can relate to that because we generally have enough stuff to get by, right? Where most of us are not maybe even considered poor, we have stuff, but we realize, where do I turn when life gets difficult, when, when challenges come up, and when we feel a lot of disappointment? And so one of those psalms that he writes, and there's many of them, is Psalm 55. And he begins in Psalm 55 by saying, I'm overwhelmed. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. I, I have fear. I have anxiety. I can't sleep at night. My enemies, you know, they're multiplying around me. And so he has a lot of challenges. But his challenges even get deeper because it's not really now so much about his enemies. You know what he says? It's my best friend. My best friend turned on me. The guy who I trusted, the guy who I loved, the guy who I would die for. He's after me now. He's turned on me. And actually, this is one of the scriptures that Jesus co quoted, right? It, it, it was my best friend, a close companion, is the one who's risen up against me. Well, what do you do in a situation like that where literally everything is falling apart? And this is what he says. This is the context. It's not like, you know, I'm just having a really great day, so I just cast my burdens on the Lord. It's not a big deal. I can do that. He's like, these are the heaviest burdens I've ever had in my life, and I'm still not even sure what I should do them. But I know this is what I can do. I can cast my burdens on the Lord. And he's saying, you, when you're in this situation, you cast your burdens on the Lord, because God will sustain you. He'll be with us. He'll hold us up. He'll give us strength. He can help us through. If we trust in him, we turn to him, we pray to him, God, you know, I'm overwhelmed. God, I've got a lot of anxiety. God, I've got frustration. Because these relationships not working out. Or the thing that I'd planned, it's not, it's not working the way I thought it would. So things can be difficult. And God will never permit the righteous to be moved. Sometimes we can take a stand and, and he'll make sure we don't fall. He'll make sure that we don't get broken. He'll make sure that we don't suffer under the consequences to the point where there's no recovery. Yeah, life is difficult. But he's saying, you know, we can turn to God because he is there. He's not going to let us down. He's not going to abandon us. He's there. So what do we do with all the burdens? I mean, we got burdens during the day. We got burdens about what the future. We got burdens stuff in the past. We got burdens maybe even thinking about lost loved ones. We've had people die even just recently in the church. It's hard to go through all of that. But we say, God, I'm going to put these burdens on you. And I'm going to find the peace. I'm going to trade. I'll give you the burdens. You give me your peace. How does that sound? That's, how, that's what God's willing to do, to help us through no matter what it is. And so this is found throughout the Old Testament, maybe even more so than we even find it in the New Testament, although we'll get to some New Testament scriptures about how God's with us. In Psalm 68, verse 19, Blessed be the Lord who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. He's there all the time. No matter what we're going through. You can say, but this is just a little thing. It's not huge. I mean, I've had worse stuff, and I know people in the world, my friends at church, you know, they're going through big stuff, but I got a little thing, but it's still kind of really bugging me. It's kind of really a sore spot. It's getting difficult. It's maybe growing, this, this struggle I have, at least in my mind. Can't let it go. But he's saying daily burdens, whatever they are, we can give them to him. We can trust them with him so we don't have to be carrying around. And what do we call it? Carrying around baggage. 
carry around the anxiety. We carry around the fears. We carry around the disappointments. We carry around our failures. We carry around stuff that happened 20 years ago. We carry around stuff that maybe even happened when we were young. Maybe stuff that our parents said to stuff that our teacher said to us. You know, a falling out we had with a friend when we were a teenager. You know, all that stuff has an impact on our life. And we say, God, you know, I'm just going to give that to you. It's, it's in my past. Maybe I can't change it at this point. So I'm just going to trust you. I don't need to be allowing these things to affect my life. Now, you may say, well, none of that stuff, none of my past ever affects my life. And in your mind, that's true. But, you know, our past does affect us. And sometimes it's more subconsciously. We don't even realize it's how it's affecting us. Like, why are you the person the way you are? Why are you different than other people? Because your past is different than everybody else. You can say, well, I had a brother and sister. We grew up in the same house, same parents. Everything was the same. Well, you know everything was different, wasn't it? I mean, just the way things are, the stuff that you had to go through is not necessarily what they had to go through because you're different people. You had different interests. You had different friends. You were in different grades of school. You, you know, even the different birth order kind of affects sometimes I know your parents were perfect, but sometimes it even affects the way parents treat kids. If you're the first or the last and there's 10 of you in between, yeah, it's going to be a big difference on how things look when you're growing up. But that doesn't have to define who we are, right? We can say, God, all these struggles and hurts and pain, the disappointments, the failures, I'm going to give them to you because God's the one who's going to pair us up. Or he's going to bear our burdens, but he's the one, not just our burdens, but he's going to lift us up. He's going to help us, maybe when we don't have strength in ourselves. Somebody's got to help us get over the next step, the next hurdle, or climb the next rock ledge. God's there, and he's the one who's going to give us the strength to carry on. And here's maybe something, like, could be a familiar verse. Does that sound familiar at all? Oh, yeah, that's what Ken read around the Lord's table right? So it kind of goes hand in hand, right? How it works together. That God is the one who gives strength. And he, the point is even, that's, a, that's why there's a picture of a young guy. You know, this was a picture of me, I think it was last week. No, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, the young people, they got all kinds, of, all kinds of energy. You know, they can run and they can go and they can, sometimes they hardly get tired, you know? But even the young people get tired. You know, they, they can't run forever. They can't Because you know what happens with kids, right? They go, 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 and then comes a point in the day, and it's kind of like, zonk, they're out, right? They're just asleep somewhere, anywhere, just wherever they're at. They just fall down, fall asleep, because they're just exhausted. But everyone gets tired. And it's saying that God is going to help us in those times when we're weak, when we feel like giving up, when we feel like we're at the end of the race, when we feel like we can hardly ever make it, can't keep going. God says, I'll be with you. I'll strengthen you because you can't do it alone. You can't do it by yourself. And so God says he's going to renew the strength. He's going to mount up with wings like the eagles, eagles so that we can run and not be weary. We can walk and not faint. And so that is kind of a metaphor. I, I understand that because some people here will be like, well, I'm, I'm 80 and I walk with a cane and I can't walk 10 miles. And that's probably true. But it's talking about how you live and how you, your attitude towards life. What you think of when you think about tomorrow or even this afternoon. It's kind of like, I'm not done. I'm still here. God's got me here for a reason, for a purpose. And yes, I can't do as much as I used to do, but God still had me living here. And there's a purpose to it. And maybe it's a purpose so I can, I can do more. But you know, sometimes when you get older, you know what your purpose is? To teach other people, like your kids, how to serve, how to be humble, how to trust in someone else other than themselves. Because maybe you kind of, you know, I hate to put it that way, but sometimes you are, or at least you're feeling that way, you are the burden to others. But what's God, he's using you to teach somebody else. Because at one point in your life, I'm sure you've had people that you needed to look after or care for, whether it's an, a senior parent or somebody with some kind of a, a, a need or an issue. It may not even have been a long-term thing, but you're there to serve and to help. And so God uses us. We're thankful for opportunities that God gives us every day. And they can be struggles. But we turn to him and say, God, I find my strength and my peace, my hope. It's all found in you. 
In Isaiah chapter 41, fear not, for I'm with you. I will not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you by my righteous right hand. God's going to hold us up. The interesting thing is there's a lot of these verses in Isaiah. And Isaiah is kind of going through, yeah, there's going to be a lot of struggles in Babylon, but there's something better. If you could just wait, if you could endure, if you can just make it through this, there's something better coming. And you kind of read through Isaiah, and when you get at the end, it's not like just getting out of Babylon. It's not just about going back to Jerusalem. It's not just about rebuilding the temple. It's none of that. You know what it's about? It's about going to heaven. You know, it's about a new city, a new kingdom, something that God is going to establish. And so Isaiah is the, is the prophet that speaks a lot about the coming Messiah. That's Jesus. And the coming kingdom. And that's what we're living in right now. The church that, that, that uh, Jesus established, where we can be together and worship him, put all of our trust in him. And the coming kingdom of heaven, when we die, that we're going to go and live with God. Isaiah is about this, about saying, yeah, it's tough now. Life is a challenge. But I'm going to be with you. And you got to look forward. you got to think about what's ahead. you got to think about promises that God has made. And we can trust him. And he's going to hold us up. And again, in Isaiah chapter 46. Listen to me, O house of Jacob. All the remnant of the house of Israel. Who have been born by me from your birth. And carried from the womb. Even to your old age, I am he. And to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made... And I will bear, and I will carry, and I will save. So God's saying this to Israel. I believe he's saying this to us. If we're his children, right, if we're the people of the faith of Abraham, saying, I'm going to trust in God. I think this is what God's saying to us. I'm the one who gave you life. You know, even before you were born, like literally when you were still in the womb, God saw you, he knew you, he formed you, he had a plan for you. You weren't a mistake. You weren't an afterthought. You weren't an accident. You weren't just a product of biological chemistry. God had a plan. He knew you before you were born. And when you were born, he carried you. He's kind of like your mother and your father. He looked after you. He loved you. He nourished you. He's been with you the whole time. It's, you know, some people think, well, you know, I didn't become a Christian until later on in life. It's like, well, God knew you before then. He had plans for you before then. And so this is what he's saying to Israel. And if you remember Israel, the people of Israel, the Jewish people in the Old Testament, they weren't always faithful. They weren't really always doing well spiritually. They weren't always being, you know, loving children to a heavenly father. They were oftentimes rebellious, going their own way. And reckless. So I still loved you. I never gave up on you. I still carried you. And now you're in your old age, and what, you think I've given up on you now? And the idea is, and to gray hairs, I will carry you. And it seems to be the same picture of the father carrying the infant. You'll say, well, I'm 70 years old now. I'm not an infant. It's like, doesn't matter. God can still carry you. You're not too big for him. He'll carry you. He'll be with you. So we can put our faith and trust in him. He's not giving up. No matter what we've done, he's not giving up. No matter what our situation or what our condition or about what our past, he's not giving up. And he'll still carry us. And so there's a promise saying to Israel, they've not done so well, but he's saying, God knows, and he's been with you from the beginning. He's going to be with you to the end even to the end of the earth, even to the end of the ages, as Jesus would say. I will be with you. Isn't that what he said? I mean, that one of our favorite verses, Matthew 28, verse 20, and I will be with you till the end of the ages. I mean, it really means the end of time, and we're thinking, well, the end of ages, like my ages are getting up high. I got a lot of ages, right? Another birthday, more ages. Well, you could look at it that way, too. Be with us all the way through. From start to finish, God is going to carry us. And so the Bible reading today from 1 Peter says really the same thing. The promise that we have from God. 
The promise that he will be with us, that he'll be faithful, that we can follow him, we can trust in him. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Now, the humbling part is, is important because sometimes we think, I can carry this, I can do this, I'm strong enough, I've succeeded in the past when I've had problems and I can do it again. And sometimes it's, it's humbling to say, God, I need you. I can't do this on my own. And maybe I think I can. And maybe I can fix some of the stuff. But really, it's not really going to bring the healing. It's not really going to bring life. It's just kind of maybe putting some bandages over stuff. And if we're not careful, what happens is over time, we have more and more stuff, more and more baggages, more and more issues, more and more history of things that have hurt us or things that maybe even we've got proud over. So we think, well, I'm strong and I don't need the Lord. And yet it's when we're thinking we're strong, that's when it's easy for Satan to trip us up because we think that we're invincible. So we humble ourselves and God will exalt us. We don't know when that is. It says at the proper time. It could be in the middle of the problem. It may be after you've been through the problem. He's going to be with you through it. But he may lift you up. In other words, he may restore you. Or he may make you even better than what you were before. Because sometimes trials does that. makes us even better. So we can trust in God. Or maybe it's at the very end of time to believe that God is going to come and lift us up. He's going to take us up to heaven to be with him. And so what does he say to do? If God's like that and he's faithful, he says, cast all of your anxieties. And that's the hard part. Because we can, we can put some on him. God, I can give you this. I can let it go. I don't need to keep dwelling on it and dealing with it. I don't need to keep thinking about it. This one doesn't need to keep me awake at night. It doesn't need to make, make me anxious during the day. It's not something I have to go around and talk to people about all the time. I can let it go. But that's only some of the stuff. Because there's some stuff I hang on to that I got to work it out. I got to fix it. I got to talk about it. I got to somehow develop some kind of strategy. Instead of just, it says all your anxieties, we give it to him. Now, sometimes we have to deal with it. But you know, when we put our anxieties on him, you know what we say? God, I'm going to give this to you. Why don't you teach me? Why don't you show me? Why don't you make opportunities? Maybe put some people in my life. I do need to deal with it. And I'm not sure the best way to deal with it. So would you show me? Help me when I'm studying your scriptures to say, hey, as I've been studying, I, I came across this section where it's saying, this is the way this prophet in the Old Testament dealt with the problem. Maybe, maybe I could do that. That's what that's God telling me. Or in the New Testament, this is what Jesus said. If you've got this problem, then do this. It's like, well, that's what I need to do. This is God speaking to me, helping me to understand how do I deal with this stuff. I'm going to give it to him. He's going to help me through it and even help me show, help to show me out of the, the, the problem. Show me to the solution so I can overcome. Cast all your anxieties on him. And you know why you do that. Because he cares for you. And now, if you didn't believe he cared for you, it's like, well, you put your anxieties on him, and, and he's going to ignore you. He's going to forget about you. Uh, he's going to say, well, let them suffer a little bit longer. You know, now, if he cares for you, he's looking out for you. If you can find somebody who really cares for you, well, you know, we need friends like that. We need friends to say, that person, they always care for me. You know, they're never against me. They're, they're never looking for an opportunity to humiliate me or to take me down or to exercise power over me. You know, I can share something with them. They're not going to go and tell other people about it. Because you know why? Because they care for me. And when they care for me, I know that they're going to be praying for me. And I know they're going to be trying to call, it, call me and encourage me. You know, I, I know these things because they care for me. But that's the way God is. He cares for us. He is that friend who's always loyal. He's always faithful. He's always loving. He's always going to want the very best for us. And, and I think we need to read the Bible that way. We need to read the Bible like, God is telling me this stuff because he wants the best for me. He, he didn't give us, you know, we call them rules or commandments. And they kind of are rules and commandments. But the point is, well, let's just come up with a bunch of rules. 
because, you know, the people got to follow something. And if we have a bunch of rules, then when they break them, we can say, uh-huh, see? No, God doesn't do that. He's saying, what is the very best for these people? So he came up with some rules, like maybe don't lie, like the Ten Commandments, don't bear false witness. That's what it means. Don't lie. Well, you know, if you lie to other people, you know what other people are going to do? They're not going to trust you, right? You lie to people too much and they know you're lying. Then when you kind of come up with something, you tell them the truth, they're like, huh, don't know if that's true or not because you lie more than you tell the truth and now you're telling this and so, right? So it's a good thing not to lie. Does that make sense? So he didn't say to be mean. He just said, you want good relationships with other people? Tell the truth. Well, don't steal. Kind of the same thing. If you're stealing from people all the time, they're not going to trust you. Like, here's a good one for friendships, for relationships. You want a relationship to last? Do not murder. Okay, that was, I know, that was really funny in my head. It was really funny. Okay. But yeah, but you know, if you do murder people, even if you murder the bad guys, you know what your friends are going to think? Boy, what if he one day he thinks I'm a bad guy? What if he turns on me one day? Then I'm toast, you know? So he gives these, you know, we call them rules and commands. He's like, these are blessings he's giving us so that we can enjoy life because he loves us. He cares for us. We cast our anxieties on us because that's all he's done all along. He's just saying, I care for you, I love you, and I want the very best for you. And I'm going to try to give you some guidelines and, or some fences or, you know, help you drive between the lines so that, you know, you don't get into an accident, you don't mess up your life, you don't get injured, you don't end up killing yourself. I'm going to give you some rules and regulations so they are blessings in disguise that help us to live the best life we could live. That's ultimately what he wants. God cares for us. He always cares for us. No matter what he says, no matter what he asks from us, it's because he does care. And so we trust him and we give him our life. So Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2, we've kind of alluded to this a little bit about our burdens. You know, we're carrying burdens sometimes, but sometimes, you know, we cast our anxiety, we cast our burdens on him. We know that he cares, he loves us. But sometimes we can help each other too, because sometimes we do need help. We need somebody maybe to give us advice or to give us encouragement or to pray with us or maybe to, you know, even help us out with something in a physical realm, you know, maybe, maybe helping somebody and serve them in some way. Maybe they're trying to get some task done and they just need an extra set of hands or whatever it would be. You know, sometimes we need someone else to help us carry along, get through a certain season of our life or a certain project that we're working on. So bear one another's burdens. Help each other. So that, that's the idea that, that we can go to people and ask, you know, I need some help. I got a burden. I got some anxiety. I got an issue. I got something going on. And I need you to help me with it. I need, I, I need you to work with me through it. Find victory. And that's, that's one of the reasons we come together, right? Encourage one another day after day while it's still called today. And don't give up the habit of meeting together, but instead encourage one another. Right? That's what we're doing. We're trying to help each other. So bearing one another's burdens, and what does that do? It fulfills the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ anyway? Well, the law of Christ is just be like Christ. So we look at him and say, how did Jesus live? Well, he was thinking about other people. He was serving other people, helping other people, ministering to other people, teaching other people, praying for other people. Like Jesus is just about other people. And so that's, that's the law of Christ. Love one another. Bear one another's burdens and be a servant. So that's what we are to do. But sometimes when we have the burden, that's where we can go as well to give it to somebody else. So this is what Jesus said, uh, a familiar verse in Matthew chapter 11. Come to me. And so he's saying this to people that, yeah, they've got a lot of burdens. they got physical burdens. they got uh, political burdens, kind of under the, the authority of Rome and feeling suppressed and paying all the taxes. Uh, they, they've got some spiritual burdens. And not only do they have the law of God, which is not so much of a burden, but they've got this a religious system that's added to so many of the rules. They've just kind of added on more and more laws and rules and regulations and restrictions. And, and so the people are feeling very, like, I can't do it all. You know, I feel very burdened. I, I feel like maybe I'm not even acceptable to God because there's so much going on. And Jesus said, no, you can be free. 
You don't need to be carrying all these burdens around. He says, come to me. Come to me. I will be with you. I will help you. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So that could be a lot of things. It could be physical. It could be relational. It could be spiritual. It could be something to do with you know, maybe your finances. It could be something to do with your health. It could be something to do with your family. All kinds of things fall into this. But your labor, your heavy laden, you've got these burdens. Come to Jesus. And I mean, what do you need in, the, in times like that? You do need rest. You need a break. Because you're getting tired of holding it up or keeping it together or keep thinking about it over and over again in your mind and you get exhausted. Some people are just exhausted all the time. You say, well, what have you been doing? It's like, well, I don't do anything. I just kind of sit around. It's like, why are you exhausted it's just from sitting around? Well, they're not necessarily physically exhausted, although a little bit, but they're emotionally exhausted, which does make them physically exhausted, but they're just, they're, they're just run out of gas, run out of steam, run out of power. They're just tired. So Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I'm gentle and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your souls. Interesting, second time rest comes up. Rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So what does all that mean? Well, it just means that you need to, to connect with Jesus. You need to have a relationship with Jesus. So what's this whole thing about the yoke? And you know, there's a, I'm sure most of you knew what a yoke was, but maybe you didn't. So the yoke is what you use when you have more than one oxen or horse. A yoke is something you put around their neck. So, so when they pull the plow, or maybe they're just pulling a wagon, Pulling here, they're pulling logs. Whatever they're pulling, they'll work together, right? There's no point in having them hooked up if they're not working together. But now you can have two. Sometimes people even have four in, in a yoke. Uh, two in the front, two in the back. So the more you have in the yoke, the more power you have. So Jesus is saying, I've got a yoke. I'll be in the yoke. You can get in the yoke too. Well, guess who's doing most of the pulling? It's not you, right? So, yeah, there's work to be done. He's not saying you're never going to have problems, you're never going to have issues, you're never going to have conflict, you're never going to have temptation. He's not saying that. All that stuff's coming. It's part of life. We know that. You've never met anybody that's free from the, the struggles of life. Now, some people have different struggles. I'll give you that. You can say, well, I know a guy who's a bit, well, I don't know him. Heard about a guy who's a billionaire, so he's got no struggles. Are you kidding me? He's got all kinds of struggles. Now, he doesn't have struggles with money, but he's got struggles with other things. Lots of struggles. He's not free. We all have struggles. So the idea is, if, if I have struggles, what's the best thing? I'm going to carry them all myself? No, I'm going to connect with Jesus so that he can help me. He can do most of the lifting. He's going to do most of the carrying. Like, you know what I mean? Just like the, the father carries the infant, right? So he's the one carrying. I'm just kind of the one in the yoke. I'm just kind of following the lead of Jesus. And he's doing the work. Because I've, I've given him my struggles, my anxiety, my baggage, all my stuff. I said, God, I'm just going to surrender that to you. And I'm going to let you lead. I'm going to let you be over it. And it's freeing to do that, you know. Because if you give God everything, then what do you have to worry about? You don't have anything to worry about. If I say, God, I'm going to surrender all of my finances to you, what could go wrong? Nothing. Because you know I know something? If you lost it all, you know how much you lost? You don't lose anything. You've already given it to him. So you can talk to him about it. Lord, you just lost all my stuff. I gave it. And that, that, but that would be fine. It's God, you're in charge. You know what you're doing. I mean, who can handle your finances better than God? Or what about your health? I'm going to surrender my health to God. I'm going to give it to him and say, God, you're in charge. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. You know, don't get that. But I'm going to surrender to you. So if my health is good, thank the Lord. If my health is bad, I say, well, Lord, you know what you're doing. I surrendered it to you. You're going to help me through this. It's a challenging time. It's a difficult time. But I've given it to you. And I'm going to find peace in that. It's not always easy. But I've already given it up. I'm tired of, you know, trying to control everything. God, you're in control. I'm not going to control this stuff. So you can let me know what to do to control it. 
Does that make sense? So, you know, God's not saying, you know, you don't have to invest your money, you don't have to go to the doctor, and, you know, you don't have to try to, you can quit your job, God. You know. No, you still have to do what you can do, because God's going to tell you what to do. He's going to help you out. But you surrender to him and say, I've given it up, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't have any more baggage. I'm going to give it to him. And that's the great thing about having a relationship with Jesus Christ, because all the stuff in the past, all the baggage in the past, all the stuff that you, you, you made mistakes on, and you sinned against people, and you sinned against God, and you sinned against yourself, you know, all that's in the past, but God, God, I'm going to give that to you too. It's all yours. I don't need that baggage anymore either. I've surrendered it all. The idea is, how do we look at things? The eye is the lamp of the body. And when your eye is healthy, your whole body's full of light. When your eye is bad, your body is full of darkness. So he's not talking about taking a vision test or getting new glasses. He's talking about how do you see things? How do you see it? If you see it through a human lens, a human perspective, and human vision, and if you look at the world according to the world system, you're never going to find peace or satisfaction. You're never going to find freedom from anxiety or worry. But if you look at things through a spiritual lens, saying, God, I'm going to see things, I want to see things, teach me to show me how to see things the way you see things, about kingdom priorities, that's a whole way of looking, a whole new way. And no longer do we have to be worried and concerned and frustrated and angry. Surrender to God. Say, God, this is a spiritual thing, and I'm going to give it to you. And we find rest so we don't have to carry it all anymore. So we're going to sing a song, Why Do You Wait? And if we can help you to make a decision, to say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it all to God. I'm going to free up all the burdens for my life, all the sins and problems, struggles past, and I'm going to look to him for guidance in the future. If you want to become a Christian today and surrender your life to God, let's stand, we'll sing. Let us know how we can be uh, uh, an assistance and a help and a blessing to you.